Great, any questions? Do it again. Do it again. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. Especially when you, so with, with flutes, they're sort of, we call them beginner models, intermediate models, and then handmade or professional models. Um, and so with the handmade models, especially, there's lots of different metals that they use um, silver, platinum, and different um, golds being the most popular. Um, so you can get um, a 9 carat gold, 14 carat gold, 19.5, 10 carat white gold, platinum. The, so my flute is what's called a fusion. Um, so, if you look on the inside, I don't know if you can see on the inside from here, but the inside is 95% silver and 5% platinum, and the outside is 14 karat gold. Ooh, the, um, yeah, the, um, but it's... you got to really good to earn yourself. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I played uh, quite a while before I upgraded to this instrument. Yes? Can I ask how much it was? Um, you can buy a good car with it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the questions, Brian. <laughs> yeah. How about hearing that? Oh yeah. Where can I find videos of you guys doing your like of like that same thing online? What would I look up to find that? I'm like, where you guys made that noise? Oh. oh, the noise! That's actually a great idea. We'll do like a wow. social media blast. <laughs> well, when I learned the online game, like the intro stuff, uh, my cards teacher is like, this is like, you know, the most secret extended techniques that you shouldn't do often. So I never ever agreed to play it, you know. But That's it was kind of fun. Yeah, somewhere you can't find it. Uh, my instrument is actually fairly new. I, I switched to this instrument about two years ago. <laughs> this is my new baby. I got it. I just got it back in December. Um, I uh, studied very briefly in Germany, and while I was there, I ran into this very small Japanese instrument manufacturer. Um, tried the oboes and was just completely in love with them, um, but thought I could never afford one. Then all of a sudden, this year they came way down in price, and my old oboe was really not giving me a good time, so um, I made a switch. I'm very happy with it. So just here? So, yeah, and I broke it in. If I finished breaking it in in March. You have to go really slow with this particular kind of wood, because um, oboes particularly are known to crack very easily. So if you start playing them for hours a day right away, they'll, they'll crack on you. So this one hasn't cracked yet. Not going to win. So, maybe you can skip mine. Because oh, okay. Yeah. I guess I've been in my work for about 12 years, um, but the really cool thing for us players about brass instruments is if you take really, really good care of them and don't put dents in them and clean them out really well and don't beat and beat and then play, um, they, important, important. Yes, they, uh, they last really long. This instrument's from the early 1950s. It's had many owners before I got it, and it's going to have many owners after I give it away at some point in my life. So uh, brass instruments don't really lose value. I could probably sell this actually for more than I bought it for because I take good care of it. So that's why you guys take really good care of your instruments. Uh, I've owned the buffet part for maybe 12, 13 years. And like I said, these two pieces are, are less than two years old. Um, but clarinets and oboes uh, um, are known to what we call blow out. The bore blows out. So what that means is that because it's wood, it expands and contracts with moisture and with temperature, right? Um, and over time, the wood loses that flexibility, and it'll just pick a position to stay in. And sometimes it'll pick a favorable position where you can continue to play it, and I think that's where my instrument is. <laughs> but sometimes it'll, it'll settle into a, an unfavorable position, and it just won't play well. So our instruments don't appreciate, like, Stradivarius violins, right? They're worth millions of dollars now, right? Um, the, the flute and the 
horn of year and the bassoon, I mean, those instruments appreciate because they don't go through the same kinds of environmental changes that our instruments do. So, yeah. so mine is, can you guess how old this is? Um, well, obviously, 1940. There's a disc call it here, right? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So I'm the third or fourth or more owner of this instrument. 1932. Actually, <laughs> not that shoot. 27. Uh, it's a little bit younger than that. 25. 45. I don't know. No, no, no. Tell us, Wait, guys. Tell us. It's 48. So it's uh, close to about, what, how many years now? So, so, yeah, 70 almost. So, um, bassoon is because of it, our wood is really big, and then usually those professional people like care really well, and like we can play a long time. It's a really expensive instrument, but we don't have to buy it if you find a you know good instrument. So, do they blow out? Do they blow out? Oh, well, if it's a more than 100 years old, yes. Okay. But right now, it's people still play 90, 20, 20. Wow. Something like that. So that's about done right now. But, you know, awesome. Awesome. What are some of the similarities and differences between a wall and a clarinet? Good question. Um, well, the biggest is just, you know, double reed versus single reed. Um, and Did you ask for similarities or differences? But there are the big similarities. Oh, yeah. And um, so the, I think there's some similarities in the sound. Like, I'm sure it usually generally to play the clarinet. Um, and sort of try to do the clarinet imitation sometimes when I'm trying to, you know, blend it in the quartet. The fingerings, there are a lot of, you know, fingerings we use that are similar, but um, the oboe, this is getting a little bit technical, is um, what's called a um, conical bore. So it's the bore of my instrument is actually like, yeah, just probably a quarter the diameter of my uh, pinky at the top, so it's very <laughs> And then the bell, you can see, it's a much bigger, yeah, there you go. And what that means acoustically is before the oboe had all these keys, because originally the oboe only had three keys. Um, and so to get, right now I just push an octave key or use a half bowl to, to come up an octave. Back in the day you had to just overblow it, so blow too hard on a low note, which I can still kind of do. cylindrical board instrument, so it's like the flute, so it's uh, it does not taper, right? You know, oboe is a lot like saxophone, saxophone is a conical board instrument, so when they, you guys can play the same fingering and you add what's called the octave key, on the clarinet it's called the register key because it actually overblows um, an interval larger than an octave. actually getting odd numbered partials rather than getting all of the partials like a brass instrument might get or like the double reeds might get. So does that answer your question? Yeah. Any other questions? Anything at all it doesn't have to be about their instruments, it could be about I mean these guys are professional musicians. Uh, could you guys all start on the instrument I play now? I started as a pianist. And then um, switched in the beginning of high school. Well, I guess it's the middle school here. Beginning of middle school, I switched to it. Um, I started on the piano when I was five, and then picked up the oboe when I was eight, which is somewhat unusual. Yeah, really yeah. <laughs> really, yeah. Usually, they make you start on clarinet or flute. Yeah. I'm starting that young, but I got lucky. Yeah. So me is on uh, start piano three. Play percussion, trombone. Crying at three years, and then when I was in high school, I switched to the bassoon. So I think it started with when I was 14 or 15. 15, I think. And I started on flute, and then switched to middle school to I I was 10 when I started clarinet. Actually, uh, Dad was like, hey, what instrument do you want to play when you start band? And I said, I want to play saxophone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did he bring yeah. home? <laughs> <laughs> it is a good instrument. Well, hey, how about um, 
Since you guys are right up front, Maya, Caden, Paige. Oh